Hello everybody, my name is Dr. Max Gowland. I'm the founder of a company called Prime 50. And what I'd like to do over the next few minutes is to tell you why I believe strongly that we do need to supplement as we reach the age of 50, 60 and beyond. It's well recognized that most people should get their recommended daily allowance of vitamins, minerals and protein through a really healthy, well-balanced diet. There's a huge amount of factual data, though, from many international diet and nutrition and food intake studies showing that many people are not getting near the recommended intake and some are even deficient in a number of key vitamins and some minerals. This is even more common with older adults. One way of ensuring that we get enough of these key nutrients is, of course, to take regular doses of well-formulated nutritional supplements, such as those within the Prime 50 range, which has been carefully and meticulously formulated and targeted for the needs of the over 50s in particular. In addition to the fact that not everyone will get their daily allowance of some nutrients, it is also well documented scientifically that some nutrients are simply not absorbed by older adults nearly as well as younger adults. So we may need to enhance our intake of certain nutrients to account for this as we get older. This slide is not to frighten you with lots of technical data, but just to show you that Prime 50 has examined data from many diet studies across the world, including the UK National Diet and Nutrition Survey for the over 65s, the huge US NHANES study, the German Nationwide Food Consumption Study from the Max Rubner Institute, and a number of scientific presentations from Tufts University in the US. Also, an extensive review of micronutrient intakes across Europe for over 60s has also been undertaken. And we've used this array of data to help us understand the needs of the over 50s and have formulated the products accordingly. One such vitamin is vitamin B12, which can be very, very poorly absorbed in up to around 30% of the over 60s. And that's due to much lower stomach acid. And of course, stomach acid is needed for the efficient absorption of this particular vitamin. Another is calcium, which again is less well absorbed in the older population. And calcium, of course, is critical for not only bone health, but also for the functioning of our muscles, the division of our cells, even our nervous system, and also digestive enzymes. Vitamin D, again, is a very important bone-relevant vitamin, which we mostly get from exposure to sunlight. But as we age, we tend to spend less time in outdoors, and so supplementation is the only way to top up with this very important nutrient. It's now well recognised by the NHS that vitamin D supplementation is a must as we get older. There are another selection of key nutrients that are so relevant to our health as we age, such as riboflavin, vitamin B6, vitamin C, vitamin E, selenium, zinc, chromium, potassium, magnesium, and also folic acid, and a few more. Let me talk to you very briefly about optimal intakes. So in some cases, we may have to overcome nutrient deficiencies, or at least potential deficiencies. But also in some cases, higher than recommended intakes or optimal intakes can be very beneficial, as proven by many scientific studies carried out across the world over the last 20 years or so. This is where a higher than the recommended dose has been found in some studies to show additional longer term health benefits for a particular ailment. A good example is protein, where the long ago established recommended intake was about 60 grams a day on average. Though most adults achieve this reasonably easily through their diet, there has been a huge amount of work carried out by very eminent protein scientists across the world, which has shown that a higher protein diet is extremely beneficial to the muscle health of the over 50s and 60s and 70s age group. This is to combat the muscle loss as we age, otherwise known as sarcopenia. And this benefit has been confirmed by a very impressive international study called the PROT Age Study. This study was attended by top protein scientists across the world. They met and reviewed all the data together and agreed on a clear set of guidelines and recommendations for the aging consumer regarding optimal protein intake. And basically agreed that typically if you were over 50, 60, 70, you needed around 40 to 60% more protein than a younger adult. A written summary report authored by WHO, the World Health Organization, in conjunction with Tufts University in the US, 
promoted the importance of many micronutrients and highlighted their protective role across a whole host of disease states. Some extracts from this report are listed below and highlighted. Let's start with vitamin C. Vitamin C appears to have a protective effect against some cancers. And low intakes of vitamin E are correlated with increased risk of cancers. Take folate and vitamin B6. Low blood concentrations of folate or folic acid and vitamin B6 have been linked to an increased risk of stroke. Take a look at this slide. You can see on the left very healthy bone and on the right osteoporotic bone where the calcium matrix has literally failed to form uh, over many, many years and therefore you end up with a very cage-like and very weak structure within the bone. And vitamin D and calcium together are known to protect against osteoporosis. Also, minerals such as boron, copper, magnesium, manganese and zinc play a very, very key role in also contributing to bone health and bone density. Supplementation with some antioxidants such as vitamin B6, zinc, vitamin E, vitamin C and also selenium have been shown to enhance immunity in older adults. Take another two vitamins such as riboflavin and niacin. These are very important vitamins and supplementation in many studies has found to reduce cataracts. Mild deficiencies in folate, B12, vitamin C and also riboflavin have been associated with poor verbal reasoning and also poor memory. And low B vitamin status was associated with the risk of cerebral disease. So these vitamins are absolutely critical for our health. It's true that some studies require even more research, of course, as nutrient research is highly complex and can so easily be misleading due to flawed experimental design. However, research continues into the prophylactic or the disease avoidance use of supplements in mid to later life, as the overall opinion being that getting the right nutrients into our bodies regularly does contribute to a whole range of healthy benefits. And we know and accept that healthy nutrition is one of the key drivers of a healthy life together with regular exercise. Let me talk about megadoses just for 20 seconds. Having promoted the use of supplements, Prime 50 is not an advocate of taking single vitamin megadoses, however. Low vitamins and minerals and other micronutrients are essential to our well-being and the overall healthy functioning of our metabolism. Some of these micronutrients can be toxic at extremely high doses and therefore should be best avoided. Some nutrients are easily flushed away by the body, whereas others, such as the fat-soluble vitamins, tend to hang around a little bit longer and can build up, for example, in the liver. One such vitamin is vitamin A, uh, which can even cause birth defects in the unborn child if taken at mega-dose levels. Therefore, it's safe to say that Prime 50 have done their research and ensured that our understanding of nutrient deficiencies and possible deficiencies in the over 50s population is factually based. We've also ensured that our products, even taken in combination, are formulated below the set upper tolerable limits set by the appropriate legal and legislative authorities across Europe. This understanding has enabled us to ensure we formulated all of our products that are the most relevant, the most effective and are perfectly safe for the over 50s. If you want any more information about Prime 50, just go onto our website at www.prime50.co.uk.